Hi, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time you're watching this, and welcome to Sis It's Just Not God's Best for Me Self Actualize and Shine Podcast Show with me, your host, Sinquetta Wilkes. And today we have a special guest for you. For today's show title, it's Sis It's Just Not God's Best for You If You Are Acting Like a Victim After the Breakup and Not Moving On in a Position of Power with our special guest, Warren McFadden, a.k.a. YouTube's Coach Warren. So let me tell you guys a little bit more about Coach Warren if you don't already know him. I'm pretty sure you have. I'm pretty sure you've seen him on the YouTube streets if you ever try to search, like, how to get over my ex. His video most likely popped up. So Warren, he's a people's coach, and he helps people from all over the world, from all different walks of life. Um, from his YouTube channel, Coach Warren, <laughs> where he posts videos on a wide variety of topics, such as gaining respect, life lessons from the Bible, and how to get over your ex. In his most popular video title, Your Ex Will Always Come Back to You If You Do This, has over a half a million views on YouTube, making him your go-to guy for how to bounce back and recover and move on and get on your grind after a breakup. That's right. <laughs> so posted about well close to 500 videos on his youtube channel and has just published his first book the position of power how to win and have the ultimate power over your narcissist x and this is why we decided to have him as a guest on today's show so welcome coach warren to the this, this is our podcast <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> what's happening yes what's up? What's up? well I'm so grateful to have you here. Appreciate it. So pick your brain. So don't hold back. Don't hurt our feel. I mean, don't worry about hurting our feelings. You know, right. if you listen to my podcast. We're tough cookies, so right. don't be afraid to go in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to know what was your inspiration behind starting your YouTube channel? Was it like a dare? Was it a good idea you thought of? Like, what was your inspiration in starting your YouTube channel? Well. The way I started was like this. It was like um, I was going through a little situation in my, you know, my little romance life, my little love life, if you want to call it, call it that. And I was just taking notes, and I just hate writing shit. I mean, writing stuff down. <laughs> and and um, at the time, my my little boy was like, "Hey, just record yourself. If you don't like writing, record yourself. Record yourself on YouTube instead of taking all these notes and stuff." My notebook, from when I started right here, this is my notebook, where I started. All the notes. So I was like, okay, that's filled up with notes. So I ran out of paper, so I just started making YouTube videos. But when I started making the videos, I don't want to look like I'm a sucker. And it's like, hey, man, this dude got you know, relationship problems and stuff like that. So I disguise the video. I'm talking to myself in the video. On me, talk to myself. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. I know that sounds weird to say it like, dude. But anyway, I'm talking to myself about the problem that I have and giving myself solution. So when I go to the problem, I can just go back to the video and watch it. Then I'm like, all right, cool. But here's the flip side of that. Other people start watching it too. Mm -hmm. And other people are like, hey, those are good strategies that you have. Teach me them. I'm like, I don't, don't want to teach you. Sh I mean, teach you nothing. I don't know you. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. I, I mean, I don't know you. So they're like, hey, I'll give you money. I'm like, nah, I don't want your money. So the thing is, the more I know, then the people surrounding me, they was having the same issues. And me having the answer, I just give it to them. So they was like, hey, man, they'll come back and tell me thanks. That advice you give me, it really helped me. you like a coach. You like a down to earth young coach, you know, and there I go. <laughs> the you rest know, is history. Mm -hmm. Ta -da. <laughs> anyway, and so wow. um, I don't see it like myself as one like a mother coach. You know, I'm like one down to earth person. You catch mm -hmm. me at your barbecue in the back drinking beer or something, mm -hmm. or fighting or <laughs> something. But anyway. <laughs> But um, let me stop talking. Let you go ahead and answer your question. Oh no, no, no! So that was good because I had no idea. So really, you were trying to be a YouTuber. It just so happened that you was coaching your own self, and people liked your advice, and that the rest is history. 
Yeah, I never planned it. This all was never planned. But the thing is, kind of like I always compare myself to um Jonah, Jonah, the dude that got swallowed by the whale. Mm -hmm. he, don't, he didn't want it to do it. And since he was disobedient, trying to run from his purpose, you know, they throw him over the boat and the whale swallowed him. He had to sit his butt in that whale until he made up his mind to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, I guess I relate to that story because I never really wanted to do this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you, you had a purpose. You had, uh, you, it was something in it. Well, you had to kind of warn the people. That's what Jonah did too. Like, you know what I mean? He went and told the people, even though he really didn't want to. Exactly. <laughs> Even when he tried to run away, God was like, uh-uh, go. Exactly. You know, the <laughs> fishermen that was on that boat probably that night, he was like, man, this storm is coming because if this dude <laughs> want to do his purpose. Then John was like, okay, I know the storm because of me. Just go and throw me overseas, man. Like, <laughs> You know, and the, mm -hmm. the whale just happens. To, our guy had it fixed. He was like, I ain't gonna let, I'm not gonna let nothing happen to you. So I'm, I'm gonna just let you stay in this little, you know, this well. So he could have drowned. He could have drowned, you know. So God just came, had a little big giant fish, the whale, swallowed him up. He didn't get hurt. He didn't drown. He just sit in the well. I didn't know what he eat. Probably, you know, eat the well, parts of the well. <laughs> but, you know, when when he made up his mind, then the whale spit him out to the you know, to the um to the land. But that just I always compare myself to that Bible story. Even to the day. Cause people get on your damn nerves. <laughs> so I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. go ahead. But uh, you but it's good. And you touched on something that I find interesting as well. So basically, are you saying like after a breakup or a situation, it's good to maybe journal or write down the lessons that you got from the experience? Yeah, yeah, because the thing is, at that time, your mind be racing, and your mind be wanting answers. Why this? Why that? And the thing is, you gonna, some people become a great detective, <laughs> you know? They want to know why their loved one is cheating on them and stuff like that. Guarantee you, if you want something to be found, Go find somebody like, like they boyfriend or ex, I mean somebody cheating on them. I guarantee you they'll find out all the news, all the news. <laughs> they join the Scooby Doo gang. That's what I call it, the Scooby Doo gang. How they solve mysteries and stuff. Let me stop being goofy. But at the same time, yes, that time your mind won't answer. You'll you'll find the answers and just I just I just wrote them down. Mm -hmm. You know that's all I did different. I think that's amazing. And like, so in a way, you kind of, the first person you coached was yourself, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's right. So the, my toughest client was me. Mm. Still to the day. Mm. My toughest client that I have to deal with on a constant basis is me. Because everything I know, at some point, I have to forget about it to learn more, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Because the thing is, I don't want to get to a point where like, well, I know everything. You can't teach me that. No, I have to forget about that stuff because time be changing. So mm -hmm. I have to know, okay, that's how they used to do it. Nowadays, nowadays they got different words and stuff. Now, see, I like situationship. Now, that, uh, that already graduate to entanglement now, right? Right. <laughs> you know? So I'm still that, you know, situationship, you know. It used to be friends with benefits. Now it's situationship. Then you went from situationship to entanglement. And it's like, you got to constantly be learning and, and growing because your mind got involved or you might die and fade out. If that makes, mm -hmm. sense. that makes sense. But anyway. That makes perfect sense. And here you are. You're still evolving. So based off of what you said, do you feel like, all right, you said you're the hardest client or person that you had to coach do you feel like it's from your experience because you know guys uh coach warren he also does like one-on-one -on -one consultation so if you need to talk to someone directly about your situation hit him up. but in your opinion and it's okay you don't have to be biased you can tell the truth do you feel like your hardest is it hard coaching women or more harder or harder to coach men like do you think that one gender is more receptive your opinion or are they both uh, equal and it's really no different I mean, 
Women, on the one hand, they're more emotional. Dudes, they're more macho. Sometimes they don't want to take my advice. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, the hardest ones are females. Because the thing is, you can tell them, give them the answer, and they can have the answer right there in front of them. But the emotions, they always mm -hmm. go back to that first thought, that first emotion that they have. They always go back to that. Then that's why I have multiple, you know, sessions with them and stuff like that like look this was going on you got to confirm it dudes are like okay that's what it is then they go and they you know they get this little ego thing going like Shh, i'm gonna be all right then they, you know most dudes what they do they go out there and just <laughs> some other girl and they feel like they're okay if they run out there and be a whole enough time they'll forget about the previous person that they were dealing with but women sometimes it's, it take them a little longer, especially if that female, you know, was imprinted by the guy, you know, and they have deep emotions for that guy, and they made that guy they like. Then yeah, it's gonna take some, take a while for them to get over that 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 bond you have. Nine times out of ten, it be women in trauma bonds. Mm -hmm. The deepest trauma bonds and Stockholm syndrome be women. Interesting. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead. I was about to say, if you look up Stockholm Syndrome, the first person that went through it was a woman in Stockholm. That's where the word come from, Stockholm Syndrome. You know, it was his bank robber, robbing a bank. And he had some, you know, some people in the bank, you know, had them at gunpoint. And this lady, she had Stockholm Syndrome. So she started fighting the police to protect the bank robber. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays that's in relationship. How how often you have a like a I don't know if females listen to this, you probably have a female friend and that mm -hmm. female friend is talking to, you know, a simple I mean a no good ass person mm -hmm. and you tell her, Hey girl, I you say, Hey sis, mm -hmm. <laughs> this dude is no good for you and you need to leave him alone. Don't you know she'll probably fight you before she break up with that dude? Very true. We see it all the time. Yeah. That reminds me of like this situation. Um, you know, Oprah, she'd be posting like old clips of her uh show from back in the day. And it, they were talking to like wives that stayed with their cheating husband. And they was like, How come as a wife you go after the the other woman instead of your husband? Like you just said. Mm -hmm. The wife was like, Because I love my husband, like I love him. I don't love that other woman, so it's easy for me to take out my anger on her versus him. Love him. So, like you said, even if like the guy is doing wrong, like a woman's love will blind them to like what's going on. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I feel like it's a good thing too at the same time because that's where that nurturing side comes in, and that's how come like they always say a mother's love is unconditional. You know, she always gonna love her baby. He could be like a murder killer, anything, but because she's a woman and that love like you know she's well, true but that can be also a bad thing you know mm. real bad thing is we just say like um the jim jones situation oh yeah mm -hmm. you're like who is jim jones do your research you'll see Those oh, I know jim jones. <laughs> not the rapper <laughs> you know not the rapper but mm. you know the jim jones situation those women was in love with him they was willing to follow him to the death. They couldn't see the wrong in what he was doing. They was in love. So it can cut both ways. The key is the key is yeah. when you get in relationships, I know a lot of people ain't gonna like this shit, <laughs> but you can't put your spouse, your loved one, as the center of your life. Mm. My grandma told me once before she died, yeah, my, you know, my granddaddy, I love him to death, but I don't trust that mother else. But to his face, I trust him. But behind the scenes, no, I don't trust him. I start trust people to a certain extent. That goes for everybody. Your mama, your daddy, your daughter, whoever. You name them, that goes for them too. Trust everybody to a certain extent and don't tell them all your business. Your I mama did <laughs> For real. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely, your, you, your grandma was very wise, which is true. My I mean, thing? Go for everybody. Didn't Marvin Gaye daddy shot him? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. You know? 
I always say my thing is hold back with people and tell everything to God because you know, like if you tell God everything, he's not going to use it against you or whatever, but people may. So when you about to get on the phone, tell your friend, da -da 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 -da, wait, don't pray about it first. And then, you know, I feel like once you get that release out, you're good, but don't, I feel the same way. Like you shouldn't tell every, never let your left hand know how your right hand is moving. Like, you know? There you go. There you yeah. go. So <laughs> that's, I learned that from the old folks, you know, that was my teacher before anybody else. I just watched them and how they react, how they do things. So, yeah. and, you know, before they passed on, they installed that into me. Then I just take what that I learned from them, put it into modern time, and they, there you go. Yeah. So now I'm just taking what they taught me, mix it in with what I learned, and t telling other people so they can take it and run with it and do whatever they're going to do with it. So that's all I'm doing. No, it makes perfect sense. Or, like, I remember it's a quote that goes, a smart person learns from their mistakes, but a wise person learns from the mistakes of others. So why do I have to, like, experience it if, like you said, you look at other people and see what they're going through and just learn from their mistakes. Like, True. if somebody else done went through it, I'll just learn. <laughs> true, very true. True. Yeah. So, based on your coaching experiences with your clients and things like that, what do you think is the number one reason why people can't move on? I mean, you already said for women, you think it's because of love and emotions, but do you think that's the same thing for men? Like, why yeah. can't they kind of let go? Yeah, you know, um, a lot of a lot of dudes they've been brought up to believe they have to, you know, be in a the relationship a certain way. They have to be a traditional man, or you know, all women, you know, the women listen to this, this too. They have to be traditional. But mm -hmm. if you stop and look and pay attention to society, how often do you see traditional men and women? I'll wait. I think you, I think wait. I see them pretty often. You feel? Know, I swear, when I turn on the news, I see a whole crowd of people singing the rap song at the White House with their hand over their heart, you know, stuff like that. Back in their time, like, you know, like when my grandma and all those, they didn't have like Twitter, social media. They, when they turn on their TV, they didn't have, you know, people twerking, doing stupid shit. I mean, stupid stuff for attention and things of that nature. They didn't have that, you know. Back then, how my grandma and nuns, you know, said, and I seen my auntie nuns say this too, they'd rather have a half a man than no man. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, they're like, man, I'd rather have no man and be by myself and in peace. So it's a big mix up. It's like the, the generation nowadays, they're like, man, we ain't about to take that, what they took back then. Yeah. So, but back then, the traditional guy, I mean, they went to work, they come home, they took care of their, took care of their family, they had everything, like a, a house dynamic, and the woman was like, okay, I'm willing to stay home if he go out there and break that bread and do what he do and bring it back to me, and I'll break pay these bills. Nowadays, females like, I got my own money. I'm not staying home and cooking for you. Hell no. Back then, it was like, okay, I'm going to feed him first, then the kids and stuff like that, then I eat. I've seen this happen. You know, mm -hmm. in my 37 years on this earth, I've seen that actually happen. Nowadays, like, no, I'm gonna feed the baby, then I'm gonna eat, then it, he can get his ass so he can get something out the refrigerator and be hungry. That's how it is nowadays. So it's a big mix-up. I know a lot of people like, man, Warren, shut your ass up. You don't know what you're talking about. But anyway, that's how, that's what I see. I don't, I'm gonna just tell it how it is. It's, 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 it's balanced, you know. They don't have... Back then, they had more masculine dudes. Nowadays, they got dudes, little dudes, little dudes walking around with women clothing on. I, I swear, I seen a boy with a size zero pants on. They're like, I know women weigh size zero, but I swear that little dude had size zero pants, sagging them with big clown shoes. I'm like, bro, what is this? I grew up in the era we had baggy clothes, boots, all that type of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. Tupac was my role model. <laughs> you know, now we got we got dudes with different two color hairstyles. We got dudes wearing necklaces that look like choke collars. <laughs> you know, there's a big difference, masculinity. 
is just a big difference, you know. So that's why I tell people nowadays, don't focus on that relationship shit because it's set up to fail. The biggest thing you can focus on is like leaving a legacy on this earth. That's the most important thing. What you're gonna be remembered for, what you get out your bed to do every morning. You know. I like that. I agree. And I was gonna I was gonna say, like in your book, you do talk about bettering yourself and improving your mind. So what are some ways that people can actually work on themselves? I know you didn't already touched on leaving a legacy, but is there another way that you can like better yourself or focus on yourself instead of a relationship? True, but here's the thing about that. Um just like the first thing you have to do is find something that you love. It don't matter what it is, as long as you're not selling crack to little kids. Let me say that because most people are like, I do bad shit good. No, nah, don't do the bad stuff. Whatever it is that's good that you do best, do that and you know, fall in love with that. Get to the point where you love it so much that you can charge people to do it. You know, that's what you do, what you can start. Then, you know, you can help other people, you know, because that's I think that's what our purpose is to do is help other people on this earth. Leave a legacy, help someone, and then, then we fade out. And, we'll, and then when we help, that, that person that we help, what we did for them, they're going to remember that forever. And they go, mm -hmm. and what we do, it passes on. It, it's like a, like a trickle of, of effect. Like when you throw like a rock in the water or something, that big wave and stuff. So when you help someone, that's like you throwing your rock in the water, and they're going to go keep going. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. So, so that will keep me going. But um, your purpose is the most important thing. I think what it is, what, um, if I'm not mistaken, John, John 219, if I'm, you know, maybe two, yeah, John 219, you know, talking about the people without a vision shall perish. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. If I'm not mistaken, if y'all know the Bible scripture. <laughs> <laughs> y'all can correct me, but uh, this is off the top of my head. You just say the people without vision shall perish. And the person and the man who has their vision, happy is he. Mm -hmm. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, <laughs> that, I think that's what it say. You know, <laughs> for the Bible thumpers out there, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. But vision is the most important thing that we can have. Putting God first and following our vision. Now, relationship stuff comes along after you accomplish all that. Relationship is like the last thing you gain. So you got to get the foundation first. The foundation is the vision and the goal. You get mm -hmm. that stuff, then relationship is like, kind of like when you buy a house and a garage, you buy a car. The relationship represents the car. Yeah. Uh -huh. It comes later, so... Yes, it's like the icing on the cake, but it ain't the cake. Yeah, exactly. The cake is get your ass some money, man. But anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the hell yeah. you going to do with a relationship? You broke. I the old folks said, there's no romance without finance. Mm -hmm. You know, ain't nothing going on. <laughs> if y'all know the rest, ain't nothing going on but the bill, but the rent. Mm -hmm. I think that I go, ain't nothing going mm -hmm. on but the rent. Mm -hmm. you know, who's gonna pay that love don't pay that shit <laughs> i'm saying exactly and i like that you touched on that because for me and this whole reason why I like i did this podcast is because i feel like when you're in your purpose you will make better decisions when dating too like usually you always mess up and you don't date from a position of power when you don't feel that good about yourself and you know what i mean but when you are on your grind you can just like cut somebody off like that. Like, no, like you don't what I got going on here. Like you have standards, but I feel like if you don't know, oh, I'm just going with the flow, you know, that's when things go off track. So I'm glad you said put the purpose first. Mm -hmm. Put that first and then everything else will fall into place. It's just exactly. what they say when you chase girls i know they say it to me like when you chase women you'll lose money but when you chase money, women will chase you something like that so yeah, i feel like it's right. the same you know when you chase well, i'm gonna say it so it can be unisex you know i try to make it unisex mm -hmm. and that's the story behind it see when you chase after sex and dumb stuff like that 